Good evening everyone, time for another member update. So we'll start out with the Bitcoin chart. You can see that we're preparing, apparently we're preparing a visit back to uh, this trend line here. This absolutely key trend line is going to determine if we get a breakdown correction out of this trend that's been going on. Well, it's been going on since uh, March at least but it actually goes further back if you draw it uh, back to say the 12 hour here so let's do that real quick um, not at this not at this steep slope uh, so this level of uh, ascent has really just been going on since that uh, bottom sort of bottom that was put in there in late March so again another key test is coming up now I want to go over to the gold and silver chart we're going to be talking about gold but uh, I wanted to show you the gold and silver chart from NetDania here you can see this is the silver chart and uh, here's our very anomalous event here that stands out that was exactly um, at uh, I believe it was 7 p.m. Uh, kind of a strange time but you can see on no volume to speak of relatively compared to other events here such as this non-event as far as price move and again this non-event but this massive move almost two dollars um, and you can see it's on the five minute candlesticks it didn't spend any time there it spent almost all the time up here but um, enough to take out the stops if there were stops I I don't know um, but you can see now we're kind of following down in that pattern now if we go over to the gold chart you can see that we've had uh, a decline um, after that event so the decline in gold you can see a touch down to 1207 but uh, we didn't have the type of event in gold that we had in silver. And uh, let's take a, a look real quick here over at uh, WorldCoin Index to get the total here, crypto market cap, at about 91 billion. So that's on the low end. As I said before, we fluctuated between that 90 billion figure and the 130 billion figure and we're on the very low end of that uh, so uh, in my interview with Elijah I predicted a possible one trillion dollar market cap um, if we're gonna get that then we're gonna need to have a move here real quick in Bitcoin uh, most of the cryptocurrencies follow Bitcoin it's kind of a lag effect Bitcoin will take off and then other currencies will eventually take off. Litecoin is one that ha kind of has that lag effect. Litecoin recently ran up to $54 and uh, it uh, has come back and corrected down to $45. But you can see that that blast off of that bull market in Litecoin from $5, that coincided with that low uh, and the beginning of this uptrend in, in Bitcoin. So while Bitcoin had basically a, a two, two and a half fold move, Litecoin had a ten fold move. And that's the sort of thing that you see with the other cryptocurrencies. Uh, we've seen it with Ethereum and others that uh, when Bitcoin finally starts to move to the upside, then the others catch up. And then you see the whole complex move up together. And that's how you get that market cap grow so dramatically, so quickly. So let's look at this article that I wanted to talk about here. It's kind of interesting because it's Jim Rickards, who is a correspondent. You can see here, your correspondent standing on the bun. So I don't remember Jim Rickards ever being a correspondent for anyone. Maybe he's fallen on hard times here. But you can see it's via the Daily Reckoning. But this is called A Tale of Two Gold Markets. I'm going to read this and then I'm going to comment in the early morning hours of Monday, June 26, gold fell about 1% from 1254 per ounce to 1242 per ounce in a matter of seconds. And 
that the equivalent of 1.8 million ounces of gold were sold at once. The 1.8 million ounces amount is equivalent to about 59 metric tons of gold. That's about 2% of the entire gold mining production of the world for a full year. No one sells that amount of physical gold. Besides, the mining output is almost 100% pre-sold these days, meaning that if you wanted to buy that much gold directly from a mine, you couldn't do it because it's already committed to fulfilling its existing contracts. Forget about getting the gold elsewhere, too. The largest gold mining country in the world, China, produces almost 500 metric tons per year, but China also prohibits the export of gold, so you can forget about sourcing physical gold from China. Gold refiners won't sell you any gold either. The largest refiners are working triple shifts around the clock to meet existing demand. Many refiners are having trouble sourcing gold in the form of dory from mines, scrap jewelry, or existing bars to keep their refining operations going. Gold is also leaving the custody of commercial banks and heading to non-bank storage at secure logistics providers such as Loomis and Brinks. These transfers do not change the total supply, but they do diminish the floating supply available to support the leveraged paper gold products offered, offered by the LBMA dealer banks. In effect, more and more paper gold is poised on top of an inverted pyramid with a less and less physical gold at the base. And that, let me tell you, that's even more true with silver. All of this information about acute shortages of physical gold relative to demand is well documented. In addition, I've gathered a large body of first-hand confirmation of these facts. In the past year, I visited gold vaults in the U.S., U.K., Australia, and Switzerland. I've visited gold refineries in Switzerland. I've visited gold mining operations in Canada and the U.S. I've met with major bank and non-bank gold dealers in the U.S., U.K., Canada, and China. Everywhere the story is the same. Physical gold is scarce, difficult to source, and already spoken for when you can find it. Meanwhile, demand for physical gold remains robust. I met with the heads of gold dealing for two of the largest banks in China, IBC and UOB. They both told me that demand for physical gold among Chinese retail buyers is strong, despite some reports to the contrary. A gold refiner in Switzerland told me, Jim, if you called to buy gold and I did not know you personally, I would not even return the call. We have none available. With that as background to the physical supply and demand situation, why is the price of gold not soaring? That's how markets usually respond to tightness in supply. A higher gold price would encourage more mining, although new mines take five to seven years to actually produce gold, which would increase the supply and equal and equilibrate markets at a new higher price. I don't think that's a word. The answer is that there really is no true market for gold, just a rigged game consisting of physical gold and paper gold trading side by side as if they were one and the same. They're not. The June 26 flash crash in gold is a good case in point. If I sold 59 tons of physical gold short and had to make good delivery, I couldn't do it, nor could a bullion bank or dealer. Given the situation I described, you'd be lucky to source five tons in 30 days. Even that would be difficult for anyone other than JP Morgan or HSBC. I would ultimately default on the contract and face a lawsuit for contractual damages and possible fraud charges. But in the paper gold world, it's not a problem. You just pick up the phone, put the order into your broker, post a relatively small margin, maybe $100 million dollars, on a $2 billion short sale, 5% of the contract value, and you're done. You've just destroyed the price of gold with no actual gold involved. Futures markets exist ostensibly for hedging purposes, but it's difficult to see why any commercial player would need to hedge 56 tons all at once. By the way, orders of that size are usually worked over days or weeks. That avoids exactly the kind of market impact seen in this case, which hurts the hedging party because they get a lower price. Futures markets also allow speculation, which is considered to add liquidity and enable legitimate price discovery. But there's a fine line between legitimate speculation and outright manipulation, which is fraudulent. 
The difference between legitimate speculation and fraudulent manipulation is often difficult to prove because it requires some finding of intent in the mind of the manipulator. That can be elusive unless there's a smoking gun email or other written evidence. In some ways, this doesn't matter because regulators have shown no appetite to enforce the law. The message to manipulators is that this is a big boys market and players can do whatever they want as long as it's not too blatant. There is a lot of speculation about the actual motive of the flash crash. Paper gold short seller. Was this a so-called fat finger trade? And he goes on. Uh, I think that's ridiculous. Now, I, I think it's interesting what he doesn't say here. The two things that he doesn't talk about are that, in my opinion, it's the Federal Reserve and the federal government that's behind the manipulation of gold. He, he mentions gold manipulations that have failed. You can see here, uh, he says, finally, investors can take comfort in the fact that all manipulations fail in the long run, whether it's the gold corner of 1869, the gold pool of 1968, Kissinger's secret gold dump of the late 70s, or Brown's bottom. Now, these were all government manipulations of the gold price, but he doesn't come out and tell us that it's the government doing it right now. I don't think there's a doubt in anyone's mind who's serious about this that it's the government that's doing this. So one of the questions that someone asked in the comments here is, if it's the case, and if you remember, Jim Willie is hinted at different times in the past of his sources telling him that to source gold in large amounts people were paying anywhere up to 20 25 percent 30 percent premium over the spot price and in the comments people have mentioned the fact that we do not see the type of gold shortage that they're talking about uh, in the commercial market for small players and uh, someone commented and said that uh, if he says that this is a bunch of bull because if uh, if it were true, then someone would just simply come into those markets, buy up the gold on the cheap, turn around, refine it, and sell it for a 20 to 30 percent profit. So I decided to look into that, and uh, what I looked into is gold kilo bars. Now, you know the four major uh, coin sellers that I look at, Atmex, Gainesville, uh, Provident, and Jam Bullion. Uh, I assume that those might not be the biggest for kilo bars, but uh, if you do a search on Google, it brings up uh, Gold Eagle Coin, but here's Jam Bullion and Atmex, uh, a couple of others. So I looked into a few of these. Uh, there's Provident Metals. The one that had the most was Gainesville Coins. Uh, if you look here and see, and they, these are roughly $40,000. So if you look here on Atmex, if we put in a figure of nine, you can see there's only one in stock. Uh, so let's go to Gainesville Coins and search for theirs. I think when I was looking at it earlier, um, I think they had more than five. Uh, so we'll sort these, and you'll do this on all these sites, just sort them by price, and then you'll get that highest one there. And there's that uh, one kilo gold bar, or 32.15 ounces. And you can see here that max allowed is 45 okay so they're saying they have 45 of those 10 of those it would be 400,000 so that's about two million dollars so you can look around but that's about the most you're gonna find is about two million dollars worth now does that prove anything no not really because it's not in the interest of these companies to have a lot of their capital tied up into product that's not moving but the fact of the matter is that uh, Rickards is citing a number about two billion dollars that was sold in an instant uh, there's absolutely no way that you could source that much physical gold in the form of these bars uh, you'd be lucky if you bought all of these out uh, maybe to get ten million dollars worth 
So it is a, a plausible argument to argument to argue that there's actually two gold markets, uh, and really there's three. There's the fake paper market, where they're manipulating prices just using paper uh, dollars or uh, pounds or whatever. And then there's that physical gold market on the large scale, which Rickards is speaking of, which most of the gold is already spoken for, and new players can't really get involved. Uh, people are buying directly from the mines, and all the gold is spoken for. And then the third market is the, the small market of the little guy where he can buy his gold coins, his, uh, his little gold bars, and that market has enough to keep running. Now that's going to be the market that they're always going to keep running, keep prices reasonable. And that's why I said for the longest time about silver, but I believe it's also true about gold, that, uh, that they want to keep that market going regardless because that's how the little guy finds out about problems in the market. Now, if you remember uh, checking compare silver prices, uh, I'm always looking at the spot price and the bag price on the 90% silver, and that's usually where the first signs of trouble come in in the silver market. You can see here the $100, 90% uh, bag here the best price is over at uh, BGASC, buy gold and silver coins, and, and it's a premium of 7%, but you can also find a premium of 8% over at Provident, and you've got 8% over on Atmax. So there's definitely no problem sourcing physical junk, physical silver at these low prices. Uh, there's not tightness in the little guy's market. And uh, we have seen that happen a number of times in the past. But as I pointed out before, uh, people have become discouraged now. Uh, I read an article, I think it was SRS Rocco, saying that that's actually a very good sign because we are reaching the point of capitulation. Um, I don't know if that's true or not. Uh, I don't know if you have capitulation in uh, the physical silver market. You definitely have... A sort of disillusionment and as I said in the last update that uh, I think if you get below $15 we're almost there but if you get below $15 and definitely if we get below $14 um, it's just you can buy with impunity you're, you're buying something that is definitely below uh, its true value um, now we did not break below the lows you can see here back in December we touched down to 13.62 on silver per ounce so this recent flash crash brought us down to 1415 but you can see the trend here is that we seem to be pushing lower uh, kind of in a stair step fashion this was kind of like a, a warning shot may have taken out all the stops we don't know uh, we know it's rigged, but we don't know what that means. But it looks like it's trying to test those prices that it flash crashed to. That's going to mean some incredible bargains going forward. And we'll talk to you next time.